Good morning or good evening or good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce a new session of Ice to you. In this case, um, I'm very happy to welcome Professor Kintaro Hirayama. Professor Hirayama is an associate professor at Kyushu University in Fukuoka. His special interests and his expertise um, are mainly in uh, competition and in antitrust law. And importantly, um, he also works as a practical lawyer. So he has the academic background, but also the day-to-day -day practical experience that many lawyers urgently need. And I'm very, very pleased uh, to welcome you, Professor, here today to give us an overview about the situation, um, how it stands at the moment in Japan in general and in uh, Fukuoka and at Kyushu University in particular. Thank you for coming. Uh, let us perhaps start with the very obvious first question, which is how the university daily life in Fukuoka looks like in the moment and how that has changed during and because of the COVID-19 crisis. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, my name is Kentaro Hirayama and I'm very glad to be here with you and the audience. Uh, I'm, I'd like to explain about current situation and status in Japan, as well as the Western city, Fukuoka city. So the spring semester started in April. However, we could not start our lecture in April actually due to the widespread of COVID-19. Actually, we managed to start our semester in May after the long Japanese national holiday season. However, the lectures have been taught by online Zoom or other teams and other online systems only. We could not meet with my student in person, unfortunately. So um, student frequently send me an email uh, expressing their desire to meet in person with me as well as with their colleagues. Uh, this is very strange and unfortunate situation, I need to say. So um, here in Japan, as you, many of you know, the Japanese government issued emergent situation declaration in order to request almost all Japanese people to stay at home to, to, to uh, avoid any further expansion and widespread of COVID-19. And it was very good uh, decision by the Japanese government because the number of uh, patient of uh, COVID-19 uh, declined sharply in June and also in July. Therefore, uh, we can start uh, visiting uh, my, my, my uh, private study room at the university. And also uh, the university allow me to meet in person with single or two students in person to discuss with student plan for thesis or their study plan and so on. However, again, uh, in August and in September, uh, September is uh, coming very soon. Anyway, in August, the number of people, a number of patients of COVID-19 have recently been increasing again Currently, uh, 800 or 900 people have been found every day in Japan as a COVID-19 patient, this, which is not a good situation. And uh, fall semester, autumn semester will start very soon in the end of September, but the university recently decided that most of the lectures and class need to be taught by uh, Zoom, which is not very good situation for me. Uh, this is the current situation in Japan and the university and the Fukuoka. Thank you. May I ask an additional question on this, which is uh, you said that you are using Zoom 
or Microsoft Teams? Yeah. Is it up to the teacher to decide which of the uh, platforms is used or is there a central strategy that is run by the university? Mm, that's an interesting question. Um, actually, the university recommended us to use Teams. However, uh, law faculty found that Zoom is more convenient tool in teaching the class. Therefore, the faculty of law of Kyushu University independently decided to focus on using Zoom. So most of law faculty members are currently using Zoom rather than Teams. But Teams and Zoom, uh, both of them uh, are allowed in the university. The university, university do not prohibit the use of Zoom. I see. And did you have any debate on data protection implications of the systems? Was that one of the factors why, why, why you had to choose between the two? Uh, uh, actually, in the April, I remember, but in April and in March, maybe uh, there have been a strong debate as to the use of Zoom. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there was a widespread concern that uh, conversation made by a Zoom will be inspected by the company uh, officers at Zoom or mm -hmm. Uh, certain uh, uh, third party uh, mm -hmm. people. However, uh, as you know, Zoom is so convenient, very much convenient tool. So uh, we cannot uh, do the class without using Zoom. So I see. Mm -hmm. the problem is solved, I believe. I see. Okay. And, but mm -hmm. actually, the Japanese government's officers still. Uh, doing away with using Zoom mm -hmm. because the concerns still exist among the Japanese central government, which mm -hmm. is a unique situation from my viewpoint. I see, I see. Uh, you said that it's very unfortunate that you can't see your students uh, in real life um, mm -hmm. and that that changed a lot of your daily life as a professor. Could you perhaps give us some more insight about how legal education looks like in Japan if there is no COVID-19 uh -huh. and where, where there are the main weaknesses and strength of the system compared to other uh, ways of legal education worldwide? Okay, so the legal education in Japan is conducted by undergraduate faculty of law as well as graduate school, which we call law school. Mm -hmm. uh, typically speaking, the third grade student and fourth grade students will focus on the study of law uh, if the student go to faculty of law of Kyushu University or other universities. And after graduating from undergraduate faculty of law, then many of them then moved to law school uh, of Kyushu University, University of Tokyo, and other universities. So the total length and period of legal studies will be typically two years plus two years. The total will be four years at faculty of law and law school. After it graduating from law school, then most of the law school student, graduate student will apply for bar exam. Uh, pass rate of law, uh, sorry, bar exam will be 20% or 30%, which is not very low, which is a modest passing rate, uh, I can say. This is the basic system of Japanese legal education and the unique feature of Japanese legal system, legal education system is that very few students go to law school from other faculty, other than law faculty. So uh, law school students uh, typically study law at law faculty, then the additional two years uh, will be at law school, uh, which may be a very unique feature if compared with US system or other countries system. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. This is not a good situation. And this may be a weakness of Japanese legal education system because most of attorneys, most of judicial court judges, and most of public prosecutors only study law mm -hmm. at graduate, undergraduate level as well as law school. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the weakness in Japan is that most of such legal uh, specialists only have legal knowledge and uh, they do not have any other knowledge as, as for example, mathematics mm -hmm. or others. Uh, this this is not good. If we compare with US, EU, and other countries, mm -hmm. where many of students studied other uh, studies um, wide range of special practice areas such as art and law or histories and so on, which should have a very good impact for their careers as a legal specialist. This may be a weakness. Uh, however, if we can mention also on strengths of Japanese education, legal education system, Japanese uh, law faculty at Kyushu University as well as other national universities, graduate students typically uh, work as civil servant, public prosecutors, judicial court judges and so on. And, and uh, education at law faculty of national universities uh, will be very helpful for their uh, stable interpretation of Japanese law. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, interpretation and application of Japanese law by Japanese central government as well as municipal government is very stable without any strange interpretation, mm -hmm. which helps uh, Japanese companies very much because Japanese companies uh, can continue their businesses without any concern of surprise in inspection, surprise uh, request from central government or municipal government. Uh, the company's business is very safe see. I see. May I ask two questions on this? The first one, when it comes to the change from uh, the faculty of law to the law school, is there mm -hmm. an entry exam? So, yes. Yes. Yeah. However, and, yeah. however uh, unfortunately, the number of applicants for law school is sharply declining recently. However, uh, therefore, therefore, passing rate for law school is very high, uh, maybe 60 or 70 percent in average. Okay, and then from uh, when, when students finish law school and they want to become lawyers, you said that they need to attend for the bar exam and there the rate is now about 20 percent, 20 to 30 percent success yes. rate. Yeah, Currently. which is much, which is much more than it was, right? So it was Mm -hmm. Some years ago, it was one or two percent, as far as I know. Yes. So, uh, why is this? How? How did? Why did it increase? And and is everyone happy with that figure now, or do you see mm. still some more need or need to do further adjustments in order to increase this rate? Okay, uh, that's also a very interesting question. And uh, actually, I passed bar exam in two thousand twenty years ago. At that time, the passing rate of bar exam was around 2%. Mm -hmm. That was very low compared with current situation. The change, the change occurred because the Japanese government introduced law school system in 2004. Before mm -hmm. that, anyone can apply for and attend bar exam. Therefore, the number of applicants for bar exam uh, exceeded 20,000, yes. so many. However, after the introduction of law school system, the total number of law students uh, have been around 2,000 or 3,000. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and basically, only the graduate student from law school can attend by exam currently. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the number of uh, attend uh, uh, number of attendees at by exam is strictly limited mm -hmm. due mm -hmm. to the introduction of law school system. This I is see. why the percentage mm -hmm. significantly changed. I see. And what about the 80% or 70% who fail? What are they doing then? Yes. Um, uh, all the graduate students from law school can attend by exam five times. Okay. So if, if they fail at the first try, then they can try second, third, and in mm -hmm. total five times. Therefore, the, the, the Therefore, uh, the passing rate of low exam by exam is relatively low, 20 or 30 percent. But if they try five times, then mm -hmm. 40 or 45 percent student finally, finally pass the by exam. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the others work as paralegals, or do they? Is yeah, okay. So yes. Mm -hmm. Some some works at paralegal at law firm, or uh, they also work as uh, general work, general task employees at mm -hmm. private companies. But also, they can apply for uh, civil servant at central government. I see. So mm -hmm. so they have wide range of choice. Mm. As, uh, as their work after the graduation of law school. I see. Okay. And if someone wants to become an academic, then what would be the typical way to become an academic? Okay. Currently, the typical way of becoming an academic scholars or professors is mm, uh, basically. Uh, they will be required to graduate from law school first. Yeah. After that, they will be able to apply for uh, doctor course or master mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. This is a typical course. However, there, uh, another, there is another option uh, of becoming a master student directly from directly from undergraduate faculty of law. Mm -hmm. There are two main options which can be chosen by a student. Mm -hmm. I but, see. Uh, but basically speaking, if student will want to become a professor of business related uh, practice areas such as Python, patent law, commercial law, and competition law, and so on, then they will be strongly advised to study at law school first, mm -hmm. to, to, to study business-related issues, uh, practical issues first. But they, uh, if they want to become a public law or a constitutional law and so on, if, if they want to be a professor in such area, then studying at law school will not be a big help for their mm -hmm. career path. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. And then uh, as, as a PhD student or master student, they will, will probably need to write a thesis or a book yeah. or, and, mm -hmm. and that will be evaluated and then they can apply for a position as assistant professor or what would, that's the way to do it? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, writing a thesis is mm -hmm. a requirement, of course. Mm -hmm. After that, they can apply for Kyushu University as assistant professors, but they can also cho choose to apply for other universities mm -hmm. assistant professors as well. Uh, this is completely up to the student. Mm -hmm. But uh, due to the decline in the number of younger generations in Japan, 
that's because Japanese economy as well as Japanese、uh, people are declining and getting older and older. Then,、mm-hmm. therefore, the number of available posts at the universities will also be declining. Which is not a very good situation for younger students who want to be professors.、Mm-hmm. Yes. And is it, is it an obligation to work somewhere outside Japan to become an academic, or is this a nice to have, or is it not important at all?、Mm-hmm. Nice to have. Nice to have.、Okay. Not a requirement.、Mm-hmm. I see. I see.、Um, Okay, and when and and、uh, judges and and lawyers are a different thing because the the separation of career paths happens after the law, after law school, actually, right? Because I would assume that the way for judges is again different from lawyers, isn't it? Oh, okay.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Japanese legal training system is the copy and paste of the US legal、yeah. training、mm-hmm. system, therefore. Uh, all the, stud-、uh, all the uh, people who passed bar exam will get one year training at、mm-hmm. the central court judge's training room.、Mm-hmm. And this will be one year. And、uh, those who will be court judge, and those who will be private practitioners, and those who will be public prosecutors all study. And all get training at the same room together.、Mm-hmm. Actually, the, actually, on the start date of such one year training at the courtroom,、uh, they have three options. They all have three options becoming court judge, public prosecutors, or private practitioners. And, the, and they decide to be either judge, prosecutors,、mm-hmm. and private practitioners. Until the end date of the one year training. I see.、Mm-hmm. I see. And is there a possibility for an academic to switch the career path or for a judge to return to the university, or is it fixed、mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of your career? That's、uh, theoretically speaking, yes, available. However, that's completely an ex- Extremely rare to date、mm-hmm. for academics to become court judge and for court judges to become、uh, professors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, uh, recently uh, there h a v e been a great need uh, that uh, university,、uh, especially law school, request court judges to become uh, academics. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is because Law school students want to get pra- practical knowledge as、mm-hmm. to the legal system, legal proceedings, and so on. So, there h a v e been a great and big need for, for court judges. Yeah, I see. And I would assume that this is also true for you and your case because you are also, in parts of your daily life, an academic, and in the other part,、mm-hmm. a practicing lawyer, right? And I would expect. The reason for this is that you bring in the, the practical perspective into, into legal education. Yes, yes. Especially,、uh, I am the specialist at competition law and antitrust. Therefore, I need to understand fully as to the industry's practice of transactions and the practical. Strategy of negotiations between companies and so on, in order、yeah. to fully understand the theoretical issues、uh, regarding antitrust and competition. Therefore, my work experience as a private practitioner is very helpful, very much helpful for my study at the Kyushu University. But,、uh, as to, uh, but at least regarding and as to National universities. National universities have very strict rules、uh, to prohibit、uh, profit sharing work.、Uh, for example, directors at private companies and so on. Therefore, I got an exceptional、uh, admit 
from the university to, to conduct and to, to operate my own law firm and continue my work as private practitioners. This is very rare mm -hmm. uh, in national university in Japan. I see. There are, if I'm not mistaken, seven national universities in Japan, and they are the uh, most prestigious ones. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure the exact number of national universities, but there, there may be 100 or more national universities. Mm -hmm. However, seven national universities is the tier one universities in terms of the history. Yeah. Kyushu University is established 100 years ago or older. Mm -hmm. And such an oldest civil university is uh, uh, called as seven national and yes. seven M imperial universities. Yes. Because, because at that time, emperors uh, is, is uh, lived in Japan and instruct yeah. Japanese people to study, to work, and everything. So Kyushu universities and other six oldest universities called imperial universities. I see. And students um, who come from uh, undergraduate studies are free to choose where they want to apply for law school. So they can either go to Kyushu or to uh, Tokyo or to Kyoto, wherever they want. There is no pre-selection. It's just the entry exam, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. that completely due to students. Some students, father and mother live in Tokyo, Kyoto, and other states. In such cases, such students may prefer to choose University of Tokyo, University of Kyoto, and other universities. Yeah. And Fukuoka, if I may say so, is particularly famous for its international context and its international style of teaching. Correct? Yes, very yeah. unique features uh, our law faculty have, yes. Yeah, yeah, so if a student is interested in international relations or international commerce, Fukuoka mm -hmm. would be the university to choose for these reasons, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely, yes. Yes, yes. I see, there I understand so it. Many, mm -hmm. Yeah, there are so many students from European countries, Southeastern Asian countries, of course, from the US as well, Mm -hmm. And also, Japanese students who lived in foreign countries also applied to Kyushu University yes. to continue their English conversation, English studies, and so on. So, uh, Kyushu University is very unique university in terms of the number of English class, English students, and so on. English students, and so on. Yes, I, I learned this when I was uh, at Kyushu University that also the student body is outstandingly international. So the at least on a postgraduate level, the amount of Japanese is clearly lower than the amount of students from other nations in class. That is, I found that very remarkable. Yeah. Yes, and the other point which is remarkable is that Japanese students who attend English speaking class, English taught class, very fluently speaking English as mm -hmm. well. Yes. Uh, uh, generally speaking, Japanese student is not glad speaking or listening English conversation, but Japan Japanese student at Kyushu University is very good at speaking English, which is very good and unique feature in I Japan. See. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. May I ask you now the question in how far this whole system has changed because of COVID-19 and or digitalization coming with COVID-19? Mm, that's an ongoing situation, which I cannot tell correctly. Uh, however, as all people around the world is experiencing uh, now, almost all classes cannot be taught in person. Mm -hmm. uh, all, almost all students cannot even visit the university's facilities. So, so the way of teaching and way of talking with students, everything have been already changed. And we need to 
device, uh, new types of new way of teaching my class. But uh, this is very good and um, great situation for me because I can prepare a mixture of live broadcasting, recorded class and PowerPoint slides and also as a means of teaching, which is very exciting ex opportunities for me to, to, to look uh, to, to find new and good um, measures for teaching, but this is ongoing and I cannot say every, anything as to the final conclusion or final decision by law faculty or final decision my, by myself. Mm, this is ongoing and uh, situation, I think. Yeah, and at the moment, every one of you, so each professor in Fukuoka is doing his own way of uh, adapting or is there some kind of standardization or top-down approach coming from the oh. central administration? No. no, everyone is doing it in his or her own way. Yes, at least regarding faculty of law of, mm -hmm. of Kyushu universities, mm, uh, also, I'm a member of uh, student affairs committees at law faculty. Mm -hmm. There have been no such discussion of top-down types of mm -hmm. instruction as to the way of teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we currently ask all professors or associate professors to manage and and to deal with this situation. This is the only instruction or uh, advice for professors at faculty of law. Mm -hmm. And I hope finally, finally, I hope each professor will find their each good way of teaching. And I also hope that there will be a discussion at, at meetings or law faculties, board meetings, and so on, as mm -hmm. to the best way of teaching in order so, to communicate each other it, uh, with other professors to share the result and share the outcome of each professor's uh, innovative way of teaching. Yeah, and do you interact with your students for this purpose, or is there any standardized way of feedback from the students on on the different approaches, or is it just the professors evaluating what they are doing? Mm -hmm. Basically speaking, I I I, I I'm evaluating myself. However, mm -hmm. uh, in my class every week, I asked my students to provide feedback at uh, by using google forms mm -hmm. and students uh, every week sending uh, very uh, insightful message to me mm -hmm. as to the way of teaching and the contents of my teaching and also uh, about the theoretical issues of compassion law which was very interesting for me mm -hmm. It was interesting because you would not have received this kind of feedback on a, in a face-to-face -face communication or? Last week, uh, or sorry, uh, last year's class was not so interesting because uh, last year, I of, of course asked my students to provide feedback by writing mm -hmm. uh, their, their feeling on a paper but but uh, but but uh, time between two classes is very short, typically mm -hmm. ten minutes or fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they did not have enough time to handwrite their question or feeling mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. question sheet. Mm -hmm. However, this year, fortunately, all students do have enough time. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes, one hour or more to complete Google form format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. I'm getting so long questions, so long mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, comments, which is very helpful for me to yeah. change my way of teaching. This is yeah. very good for me. I see. Uh, if I may ask a similar question, um, and hopefully it's not unpolite, um, when I teach in in Japan, one of the experiences that I make there is that it's not easy, at least not for me as a European, to get people to really interact in class with me. So mm -hmm. Japanese students or Asian students in as an average are not very proactively asking or replying in class. In particular, when you compare this, for example, to a situation at a US university or even at a European university. Mm -hmm. And I would expect that the, the way of remote teaching might increase the amount of students asking questions or replying to questions uh, remotely in comparison with in class. Is mm -hmm. this true? So would you say that there is more, a higher percentage of students now actively joining the debate than before? Okay. Uh, In-person lecture class, uh, uh, which I conducted in last year, Mm -hmm. uh, typically speaking, there have been no questions, no mm -hmm. hand raising from Japanese students because there is a very strange belief among Japanese students that asking so aggressively mm -hmm. uh, any question might be regarded as impolite way of attending class. This mm -hmm. is very strange, but there may be a widely wide belief. Mm -hmm. uh, among Japanese students as well as Japanese working people as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, now all the classes uh, conducted by uh, Zoom and mm, it, this is very interesting, strange situation, but uh, increased number of students currently asking questions. This mm -hmm. is very good situation for me, but the, Probably this may be a, probably this is interesting for foreign people, uh, non-Japanese people. But many of Japanese people uh, raises their question not by raising hand, rather mm -hmm. than doing that, they use chat. Yes. On mm -hmm. the right side of. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. Of the screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Screen. Yes. And also, they have been very aggressively and actively raising questions by using Google Form, which I prepared, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is very good for me. Anyway, uh, there have been uh, recently there have been uh, increased communication between teachers and students, but most of them by typewriting format. Mm -hmm rather yeah. than oral communication. Yes. This Japanese current status, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And would you, and for you personally, is this a positive development or is it something that you do not like that much? And positive. what about your colleagues? Mm -hmm. uh, for myself and for my colleagues as well, this is very positive mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm because there have been almost no discussions or no interactions between students and professors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there have been very rare situations where only one or two students raises questions last year, mm -hmm. until last year. Mm -hmm. This year, although most of questions and conversation Occurs by uh, typewriting emails or Google Forms and so on, but this is very good if we compare with last year's situation. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. May I come slowly to an end with one question, which is uh, also important to many of the European students, which is if they are not allowed to come on campus, mm -hmm. um, it is not that easy for many of them to follow their studies simply because of the infrastructure they are living in. So the apartment is small, no books available at home, uh, the internet connection might not be fast and so on. 
Uh, is this a problem for Japanese students at the moment? And if so, how do you solve it? Uh -huh. I do not think there is a critical problem because mm -hmm. generally speaking, the speed of internet access is very good in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the cost for such Wi-Fi or other means of internet access is available at uh, relatively at low cost. Mm -hmm. So this is not a critical problem. However, the problem may be that, yes, the students cannot visit the university's libraries. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as you mentioned, students cannot have uh, full access to the university's books or textbooks and so mm -hmm. on. But the increased number of books are currently available in digital format, mm -hmm. which can be downloaded or can be printed out and so on. Therefore, I do not think that students have uh, critical difficulties mm -hmm. in studying their class and, and preparing their thesis and so on. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is not a perfect uh, solution. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a better solution as to the access to books, access to internet. This is correct. But, but fortunately, the problem is not so critical. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, all students have been attending my class without any significant trouble in accessing by uh, internet. Mm -hmm. That's the current situation. And how did you organize the exams? Was it simply an open book exam then? Or? Open book. Open yes. book. Okay. okay. Open, book, open book exam from home. Okay, and, and when it comes to your fellow professors, mm -hmm. did they have any problems in adapting to the situation because of uh, lack of books, lack of infrastructure, or lack of experience when it comes to open book exams? Or did all this develop smoothly? Mm. Also, I'm a member of study affair, a student affairs committee. I'm not aware of any such criticism or any such request from, mm -hmm. from colleagues as well as from students. I, I hope everything uh, went smoothly. That's good to hear <laughs> because that was not the case in many other universities I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with. Uh, there are plenty of issues in at least in some European universities when it comes to uh, in particular exams because there is a very long tradition of uh, doing exams um, on campus with a very strict set of rules uh, and, and that needed to be changed quite quickly. And also uh, there are quite some professors who are not really familiar with uh, remote testing and remote teaching and it took and it still takes um, quite some time to make them familiar with, uh, with some of the aspects coming with this in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, but um, honestly speaking, uh, starting from April this year until August this month, mm -hmm. all people understand, understood that this is emergent situation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, most Japanese people uh, refrain from um, submitting any criticism, any mm -hmm strong request and so on to keep to keep polite attitude towards colleagues mm -hmm. towards the university and towards companies and so on but yeah. now we need to deal with uh, continued situation which is not emergent currently then i expect increasing number of request, strange, strong request mm -hmm. will be coming from students as well as maybe from colleague professors as well, mm -hmm. which we need to deal with. Yeah. 
And this will keep us busy for the next <laughs> <laughs> week, so month. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think so. Professor Hirayama, is there anything I should have asked you uh, where you would have liked to give an answer to? Mm -hmm. Or is everything covered in your view? Yeah, this is very uh, good conversation, which I understand is very constructive and interactive. Mm -hmm. Very interesting uh, opportunity to talk with you. Thank you very much. I thank you very, very much. I wish you a wonderful evening. It's quite late already now in Fukuoka. So <laughs> thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day and a good start of the winter semester despite all these difficult uh, conditions. Thank you uh, so much. You too. You too. Thank Enjoy you. your semester. <laughs> thank you and take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.